Okay, now we come to Romans 13. We left off in the previous chapter where Paul, he states, Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So he's given instructions to individual church members as well as the Church of Rome. As well. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Now many people throughout all of mankind's history, they've had a problem with this obeying certain authority, uh, Republicans, Democrats, whatever it may be in our case today. But um, remember back in Mark 12, what it speaks of Christ. A man come up to him and he asked, shall we give or shall we not give? Speaking of taxes. But Christ, knowing their hypocrisy, they were trying to trip him up. They were acting like they were kind of on his side, but he knew their hearts. But Christ, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. To which Noel commented, Your Savior suffered under Pontius Pilate, one of the worst Roman governors Judea ever had, and Paul under Nero, the worst Roman emperor. And neither our Lord nor his apostle denied or reviled the authority. So whenever we read in the Bible about how we're to obey the government that is over us as God, he setteth up kings and he taketh them down. It's his will that they be in power. The emphasis is on don't be an open rebel because at the time of Christ, there were Jews in whom were open rebels against the Romans. They didn't believe that they should have to pay taxes to the emperor. And what Christ and Paul are teaching is that these things are worldly. Okay, obey these governments. God has them in place. You say, well, there's high taxes. Well, pay the taxes. Okay, but there is this line in which the governments can cross. And it's for a testing. All of this is really for a testing. High taxes. Or if they're trying to get you to deny your faith even. Let's take it to the Antichrist level. Where he actually says if you don't worship me. I'll whatever. I'll kill you. You'll not be able to buy or sell. You'll starve to death and all this. So whenever it comes to that. We should take the approach of Peter and the early apostles. Whenever they bring them in for uh, healing and for preaching the gospel, they bring them before them. And what does Simon Peter say at this point? They're telling them to stop doing God's work. And Peter replies at that point, they're crossing the line. The government, the rulers are crossing the line. And Peter says, it is better for us to obey God than man. Verse two, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, or rather, condemnation by the upper courts. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now we also have to keep in mind the really unique position that Paul in the, in the early church found themselves in. This was a new religion going throughout. And the Roman emperors, they demanded people to they commanded people to worship them and they would often even refer to themselves as the sons of god or the sons of gods or some along those lines so to begin to declare another king uh christians would have been really watched uh placed under the microscope back then it was necessary for paul to add these commands to the church in rome especially being the capital of the world at that time people were suspicious of the new movement Christianity, which declared another king. They were to be examples for the world to see. In Paul's letters, especially this one to the Romans, this would have been seen by the Roman emperor, or at least read by some of his courtiers, and they would have told him what was in this letter to this new movement. So uh, very appropriate to add all of this, for he, the king, is the minister of God to thee for good. 
But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now notice real quick how Paul continuously adds how this king is minister of God or is the subject of God. He is under God. So while reading this to the emperor, this would have said in his mind, at least planted a seed that he has the answer to God for the things that he does. Verse 5, Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Now very quickly in verse 5, Paul he says, Look, Christians, be ye subjects unto the government, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Because you know, in both cases, we know and our own conscience tells us, as well as the scriptures, about how God sets up kings and God takes them down. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now what we would be doing today as Christians, we would probably be quoting the New Testament, uh, maybe even Romans 13 in regard to this subject of governments and our relation to them and all. But all that they had was the Old Testament at that time, as we know it. So Paul is reminding them to do all things in love, as God commands. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. So at this point, David Guzzi commented, We have a work to do in walking properly, as in the day. It isn't as if Jesus does it for us as we just sit back and do nothing. This is where so much backsliding comes into play because people aren't uh, vigilant against the flesh. They give in to every lust and every urge. And then usually, if not every time, they, they come to a very quick end in their backsliding. Because living in the flesh... It's not as if it's just rebellion to God. You're sinning against life itself, which is God. As Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're sinning against living on the earth. So it will inevitably lead to an early death every time. Instead, Christ does it through us, walks through us, as we willingly and actively partner with him. 